What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Money in the Bank 2019 full show predictions for you guys. As you guys know, I'm just going to take you through the entire car, breaking down each and every matchup, telling you what I think about the feud, what I expect out of the match, what I like about the feud, what I think about everything going into it, and everything in between. I'm very excited for Money in the Bank because it is, it is the second favorite pay-per-view of mine behind the Royal Rumble. I love the aspect of it. I love the cash-in, the surprise, and everything about it. You guys know that uh, the last three years have sort of been ruined for me. We covered it. Um, you know, Dean Ambrose was an awesome surprise and a great moment. However, you know, we had to wait a whole nother year before Money in the Bank because he cashed in on the same night, right? And then 2017, Trash Corbin, my least favorite wrestler of all time, won the briefcase and I, it just totally took it out for me. And then in 2018, the same thing happened with Braun Strowman. I just can't get behind the man. You know, they kind of ruined him and then when he won Money in the Bank, I was just like, man, what, what is this? Who cares? And then, you know, he wasted his cash in. It was, it was just terrible, man. So in 2019, they really need to fix everything that they've done wrong the last two years in particular and I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see what goes down and I'm hyped for this. We got a lot of great matches on the card and there is a lot of effing matches on this card guys. 11 total matches I do believe. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and break down these matchups. Just a quick note about the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match, guys. Tony Nese versus Davari. I'm going to go with Tony Nese to retain. It is his first defense, I do believe, since winning it at WrestleMania 35 over Buddy Murphy. So I'm going to go with Tony Nese to retain. All right, guys, so I guess we could start things off with the United States Championship match between my man Samoa Joe taking on Rey Mysterio. Hopefully this matchup was a lot better than the WrestleMania 35 bout where Samoa Joe literally squashed Rey in like two minutes, not even two minutes. I think it was like 64 seconds, if that, and that all happened, I guess, because Rey Mysterio was injured. You know, he was dealing with that ankle injury suffered by Trash Corbin on Monday Night Raw. I hope they actually go for a, like, at least eight minutes in this matchup, you know, give them some good back and forth. I think with the brute strength and force of Joe, going up with the quickness and speed and agility of Rey Mysterio. It could make for a fun matchup. Hopefully they give him the time and I want Samoa Joe to win so badly here. I know that Rey Mysterio really hasn't done anything since, you know, coming back to WWE. He literally has done nothing of significance thus far. However, I still think Joe needs this title reign, man. It's his first championship on the main roster. He really does need to look strong. Even though he looked great at Mania, his reign really hasn't done anything since winning. So he really does need to do something here with it. I hope he wins. I'm going with Joe to retain. Locks in the Coquita Clutch. Maybe Ray goes for that jump after he hits the 619. He goes for the little springboard. Goes for the pin, but he gets caught in the clutch and Joe retains the United States Championship. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the new champions, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, taking on the Usos. Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan did just win the SmackDown Live Tag Titles from the Usos on Monday Night Raw, given the wild card, stupid idiot, moronic, awful, atrocious rule. So I think going into this matchup, guys, they are going to retain. I think it's pretty cut and dry between the two teams. The Usos just dropped them. I don't think they're going to just play title flip-flop right here. So I think that Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan are going to retain. And I think it's quite interesting that they even won them in in the first place. I just did not see this coming at all. And I guess there's a reason the Usos aren't carrying the tag titles right now. So I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan to retain and just because they just won them this week. So that's that's my reasoning. And uh, hopefully they get a good little title reign going. You know, Daniel Bryan's WWE title run was great. Hopefully he can do the same thing for the SmackDown Live tag titles. Next up, guys, we have the singles match between Roman Reigns and Elias. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not very interested in this feud at all. I think it's pretty pointless. I don't really see a point in it. I don't know why Roman's going up against the authority. Why did he punch Vince McMahon in the face? Why is this even a thing? Why is Elias handpicked by Vince McMahon and the authority or Shane McMahon or whatever the hell this is? I think this is just a uh, delay for Roman to get to the main event, and I think this is just a reason to get Roman Reigns cheered is why they put him up against Vince McMahon. So I think this matchup is pretty cut and dry, but I don't think Roman's going to win. I think that everybody, you know, they want you to think that he's just going to win straight up, so I don't think he is. I think we'll get some interference from Shane McMahon or something, and Roman Reigns will end up losing to Elias, and I really, uh, I would just say give it to Roman just because, you know, just move on from the storyline because it's pointless, but you know, it is what it is, man. I'm going with Elias to win. Next up, guys, we have the steel cage match between The Miz and Shane McMahon stemming from their feud that went into WrestleMania 35 in a brilliant false count anywhere match. They're going to meet again this time in a steel cage because Shane McMahon must do a stipulation match. It is in his contract. 
That's just a joke, but seriously, though, I think that The Miz is definitely going to get his win back. You know, he did lose to Shane at WrestleMania. After Miz suplexed Shane McMahon off of that tower, I think that it is time for The Miz to get his win back versus Shane, and that is definitely what will happen here. We could see Roman Reigns get involved. Maybe Shane McMahon gets involved in Roman Reigns' matchup, and then Roman Reigns retaliates here in this matchup and helps The Miz win. I think that would probably make the most sense as far as storyline purposes go, but you never know. But I do think that The Miz will definitely win, even if Roman Reigns Reigns doesn't get involved. Hopefully this is an entertaining matchup. Not one match not a match that I really care for. I still can't get behind a babyface Miz. I'm loving the heel work of Shane McMahon this far, but I can't really back a babyface Miz, but I am going to pick him to win this matchup. Next up, guys, we have Becky Two Belts taking on Charlotte and Lacey Evans. This is two separate matchups. We have Becky Lynch taking on Lacey Evans for the Raw Women's Championship and then Charlotte versus Becky Lynch in a separate match for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. And this is a very interesting concept. I really don't understand why they're doing this. If it were me booking the entire division, I would have merged both women's rosters. We could have got a lot more fresh matchups. We could have had more women featured. We could have had new feuds and fresh matchups. But no, they're going with this. And I honestly think that Becky is going to retain the Raw Women's Championship and stay over on Monday Night Raw with her boo Seth Rollins and then I think she will drop the SmackDown Live Women's Championship to Charlotte so Charlotte can keep her title over on SmackDown Live. I think that is the way they're going to book this thing. I think that makes the most sense and I hope we get some good matches. You know, I'm really not a big fan of Lacey Evans. I feel like she was just thrust into this position for no absolute reason. She did nothing to earn this title opportunity. She walked right down to the ring for like five months straight and then she gets an automatic title opportunity because she swings on Becky Lynch one time. I don't know man, not a fan of that. But hopefully she puts on a good show here with Becky Lynch. She did impress me pretty good at the Royal Rumble when she was entry number two or three. I can't remember exactly what entry she was, but I thought she had a pretty good showing there. And you know that Charlotte and Becky, we've seen it 163 million times. So hopefully we get an entertaining one again out of them. Maybe some interference or maybe Becky can't even compete or, or something crazy goes down. But we, I hope we get two good matchups out of the Raw and SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. But again, as far as covering the matchups, I think that Becky will win the Raw title and lose the SmackDown title. Next up, guys, we have the women's side of the Money in the Bank ladder match. In this matchup, guys, we have Natalia, Dana Brooke, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Bayley, Mandy Rose, Ember Moon, and Carmella. And I think, just like the men's match, guys, this one's kind of unpredictable in my opinion. You got a lot of good talent in there. I would personally love to see Ember Moon or Bayley take this contract home, but I think, I, I don't know why, I feel like Mandy Rose is gonna get it. I don't know. Is that too crazy to me? I just think, I just feel like that is what they're gonna do. I feel like Mandy Rose is going to win, but I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to predict Bailey. I think that Bailey really needs a surge of momentum, guys. You know, I think that that fire we saw when she came out and challenged Charlotte, you know, in the winner would take on Becky Lynch at Money in the Bank and she ended up losing to Charlotte. That fire she cut in that promo, I just really think we need more of that from Bailey. And I like Bailey a lot. And out of all these women, I would, I, I really want to see Ember Moon or Bailey win. And I'm going to predict Bailey to win this thing. Again, I think it would surge her up. It would really give her a shot of momentum and it would be cool to see her cash in and you know the crowd go nuts and all of that good jazz so i'm gonna go with bailey and i hope that it happens for her or ember moon another thing i want to add to this matchup before we move it guys is i hope this match is a lot better than last year's i don't want you know just two women in the ring and the rest of them just chilling on the outside i hope we get some interactions between all the women and that all of them you know get some good shine in and all of that jazz but again i'm gonna go with bailey winning i don't know why but i'm picking bailey Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston and my boy Kevin Owens. I'm super excited for Kevin Owens, guys. I would love to see him win here. They had a fantastic match. Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, and Mustafa Ali, that triple threat match at Fastlane was absolutely fire. Kevin Owens did not wrestle at Mania, so I'm ready to see him back on pay-per-view action here versus Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. I think it's definitely possible we see interference from Sami Zayn and Xavier Woods in this matchup. I can easily see, you know, Sami Zayn getting involved, distracting Kofi, all this jazz, Xavier Woods beating up on him, all of it transitioning, having some good chaotic moments go down, and hopefully, I honestly want to see Kevin Owens win, man. I want to see him with the WWE Championship. He's just too good. He's too talented. Not that Kofi, I'm not enjoying his reign and everything, but to me, all Kofi's done is won the title and then come out every single week on SmackDown Live and been like, it was the biggest moment of my life, 11 years, I did it, we did it, my family did it, my son, my kids. I'm just sick of that, man. Stop reminding us every five seconds. I want to see you defend this title. I want to see you 
prosper and I want to see you put on good matches. And I love Kofi Kingston to death. I just thought that they, they were beating a dead horse with all of that, man. Let's move on from WrestleMania. Let's continue this title reign and see what he can do here against Kevin Owens. But personally, I want to see Kevin Owens. I love him so much. I think he's one of the best talents in the entire world in professional wrestling and I really want to see him win here. But I don't know if I can predict it to happen because... I've read reports that people love Kofi backstage. They really like him as champion. They really are high on him at this point. But I don't know, man. I, I just don't know if that's completely true. So taking everything into consideration, guys, I think I'm going to predict... I think I'm going to go with Kevin Owens. I'm going with Kevin Owens. My boy's going to be the WWE champion. I'm going for it right here, right now, calling it. I'm picking Kevin Owens to win the WWE championship. Next up, guys, we have a matchup that I have been waiting to see for a very, very long time. A fantasy matchup. My boy Seth freaking Rollins, the Universal Champion defending that title against AJ Styles. My God, guys, the possibilities are endless with this match. I cannot wait for this. I am super hyped for it. I hope that they do not disappoint. You know, AJ Styles did kind of disappoint with Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know if that was due to backstage or people tell it, like, limiting what they can do in the ring, but these guys have the potential to absolutely burn it down. No pun intended, but all also, pun intended. I am so hyped for this match. It is absolutely ridiculous. This is the match that I'm most looking forward to on the card. And there's a Money in the Bank ladder match on the card. So that just tells you how invested I am into this matchup. The feud, you know, hasn't really been too much. The storyline hasn't been too much. They've had some good interactions. We saw the table, the Phenomenal Forum through the table. I just hope we get some classic, just clinic wrestling, man. Let these guys go 20, 25 minutes and a classic. And please just give it to us, man. I'm going to predict that Seth Rollins returns. I think that it's mighty important that he retains. He dethroned Brock Lesnar. He, you know, defeat the Beast, ended the reign of terror. I think it's only right that he defeat AJ Styles as well. Continue this massive momentum that Seth Rollins has after he beat Brock. He needs to beat AJ here. Continue that ride of momentum until a better challenger comes along, which I do not know who the hell that would be. But at this point, I think that Seth must defeat AJ Styles, and I think he will. I'm going to pick my boy Seth to win, and I hope it's a freaking five-star match, man. Give me, give me some Gargano Cole vibes. Give me some freaking dig deep in your soul and give it to me, man. Please, Jesus. I'm going with Seth Rollins to win in an epic clash, and I hope that it lives up to its match of the year promise. And last but certainly not least, guys, we have the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. What it is all about. I don't think this match is going to main event the show. However, I do want to cover it last since, you know, it's the main show. It's the main match that everybody is, you know, looking forward to as far as the whole entire pay-per-view is concerned. I mean, the pay-per-view is called the Money in the Bank. So, getting into this, guys, we have four from SmackDown and four from Raw. If we're not counting the stupid, idiot, dumb, moronic, awful, terrible, atrocious wildcard rule that makes no sense. We have my boy Randy Orton, Cian Almas, Mustafa Ali, my boy Finn Balor, and over on Raw side of things, we have Ricochet, Sami Zayn, Drew McIntyre, and Trash Corbin. Now, Sami Zayn did replace Braun Strowman this past week on Monday Night Raw, beating him in that False Count Anywhere matchup, and entering himself into the Money in the Bank matchup. I'm very excited for this. I'm very happy that Sami Zayn is in here over Braun Strowman. I think this lineup is looking great now, especially with Sami Zayn replacing Braun Strowman, and the only issue that I have with this match now is Trash Corbin. So getting into the matchup, guys, I mean, I expect a lot of great things. You know, I, I really do think this is going to be a really great match. You know, these four over here had a great Fatal 4-Way on SmackDown Live. And I think that's just a taste of what we're going to get on Sunday night with this men's money in the bank. You have Ricochet, you have Finn Balor, Mustafa Ali, Sami Zayn and Randy Orton are a good wild card. Cian Almas as well. And then you have sort of the power and the brute strength of Drew McIntyre and Trash Corbin. I would say Drew McIntyre. Tra Trash Corbin's just trash. He's not strong. Look at Drew McIntyre. That's, that's the man you want. So Drew McIntyre will definitely be the beef in this matchup, throwing ladders around, you know, slamming guys through ladders, you know, clothesline stuff of that nature. And then you have all the high flyers in this thing. I can't wait. I can't wait to see if we get some creative spots. You know, we're going to get some great flips off the ladder. Ricochet, he tore it up in that North American Championship ladder match in New Orleans last year. So I can't wait to see what he can do on the main stage of WWE, even though NXT, you know, they, they do it different, man. They, they're just a different animal. But I think they're going to bring it here in this Money in the Bank match, man. I, I cannot wait for it. One of my favorite matches of the year, and I hope they deliver, but as far as the winner is concerned, guys, I really do not know what to tell you. I think this is one of the most unpredictable Money in the Bank matches that we've had in a long time. Cian almost won the Fatal 4-Way on SmackDown Live, so it makes me think that he's not going to win. You know, usually the man standing tall is not the guy that's going to win the briefcase come Sunday. Ricky 
Ricochet, he's kind of been booked as the underdog. You know, he's lost a couple matches here and there, which makes me think that they could give him the briefcase because they do that a lot too. They'll have a guy keep losing and losing and then they'll just win out of nowhere because uh, they can have him lose because they know deep down that he's going to win money in the bank and none of that stuff's going to matter. So that's something to look out for, dude. That's something to look out for. I think that Ricochet could be a dark horse in this matchup. But my mind is really telling me is that Drew McIntyre is going to walk out with it. I think it makes the most sense. From a character perspective, I think that Cena Almas and Drew McIntyre would probably make the most sense. But another thing that I thought of is that Sami Zayn's heel character would fit this briefcase perfectly, guys. Oh my goodness. Like, Sami Zayn being added to this match really makes it interesting. I think that he definitely has a shot to walk out as, as the Money in the Bank holder. And I think that that would probably be the best decision as far as, you know, a creative standpoint. I think that it could really elevate him. I know that a lot of people, you know, when he was a babyface, we really wanted him to win the Rumble and we wanted him to, you know, capitalize on opportunities. And now that he's a heel, I think that that really is amplified greatly and he could easily win this thing and do wonders with the briefcase. I think it would fit him perfectly, you know, teasing cash in, stuff like that would go perfectly with his heel gimmick that he's doing right now. Randy Orton would be a great win. You know, my boy Randy Orton, my boy Finn Balor would be a good win. I don't know, man. I'm really stuck on it. I really can't even tell you. If I could pick, you know, personally, I would go with my boy Finn Balor or Randy Orton because they're my favorite guys. You know, I, I gotta go with my boys. But as far as a creative standpoint, I would pick Sami Zayn. But who I really, truly believe is gonna walk out with the briefcase, I'm gonna go with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is my prediction. That's gonna do it for that. And I think that he could, I could see him cash in on uh, on AJ Styles. I think that AJ Styles could pin Seth Rollins, become Universal Champion, and then Drew McIntyre come in, cash in, and win the briefcase, and win the Universal Championship. I wouldn't want that to happen because then we'd have to wait a whole nother year for, you know, to get the briefcase back in action. Um, I want the briefcase to be, you know, floating around the main roster and every show now and then because you never know when they could cash in. That's something that I really want to happen this year is, is to hold on to that briefcase for a little bit, man. You know, Edge held it for a long time as the first ever cash in, and I think they should do that again. But that is pretty much it for your Money in the Bank 2019 full show card predictions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. I would love to know your thoughts down below. Who do you think is going to win the men's Money in the Bank briefcase? Let me know down in the comment section below. React to my predictions as well. I would love to know what you guys think of my own predictions. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.